This is Pastor Victor Gooden. I'm glad that you're right here with us this evening for New Life in Motion. The place where the Word of God is taught. The place where miracles happen. The place where you can get your breakthrough. The place of your deliverance. This is the place where you can be blessed and not stressed. The place where you can receive your miracle. God has never stopped working miracles. God has never stopped making a way out of no way. This is the place where lives are changed. This is your night. You ought to say with me, this is my night. This is your time. This one is for you. Come on with us this evening for New Life in Motion. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that stays with me every second of my life. Thank you for that promise that you gave to us in Psalm 23 that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Thank you for Jesus, whom you allowed to be the sacrificial lamb and down Calvary. Thank you that three days later, Jesus arose from the grave with all power in his hands. Thank you for saving a wretch like me. Now, I'm so grateful that you've given me the opportunity to share a word about hidden potential with your people. God, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that someone would be saved. I pray tonight that someone who is on the battlefield, but perhaps they develop battle fatigue, that uh, they be reinvigorated and renewed in their spirit so that they would come back to you and start worshiping you. Oh Jesus, thank you for this medium of broadcast through the internet and all of the intricacies that it takes to put this together. But more so, thank you for another opportunity to say a word for you. Now bless me guide me and let us be blessed for this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray and give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm so glad that you're with me tonight as I teach again the series Hidden Potential. Hidden potential. All of us have that innateness that's built deep down inside and God wants to bring out of you the best that is in you. God wants to make you the best you that you can be. You were designed for destiny. Do you know that, my friend, that you were designed for destiny, that there is a, a destiny for you that's greater than what you have now? And what the Lord wants to do is bring that out. That's what I'm going to be talking to you about the next few minutes, bringing out of you that which is in you 
to give you the opportunity to be greater and to be great. Don't settle for mediocrity, just being average. I know that everybody is not going to be a star. I know that everyone is not going to be wealthy. But I tell you what, I'm going to aim at the sun. And if I miss the sun, I'll land on the moon. But I'll still be on higher ground. So I'm glad you're with me. I want you to get busy in the chat, both on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Click on it. We'd like to have you as one of our subscribers. We've got a movement going so that we can increase uh, our, our listeners, our subscribers. And hit that like button. Give us some and a good like so that uh, we can keep bringing these same kind of things to you. And at the end of this particular teaching, go out there and, and make a donation. Help us as we move to keep the gospel further. But let's talk about hidden potential. And I want to share with you a plan. If I don't finish it uh, this evening, then we're going to, as usual, make this a two-part or so series. Let's check it out. I don't often use the King James Version, but when I do, it's because I want to illustrate something that will help us all. As you see, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 from the, the old school, the old school King James Version. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When God saved me, when God saved you, God took vessels that were no good for greatness to come out of them. God took an earthen vessel, which was no good, allowed folk like me to preach, and some of you, if you're preachers listening to me, allowed us to teach and share the word. And the good that came out of this was not the fact that we're good, but the goodness of God that's inside of us. Any person who's already saved or will get saved, it's not because of us. It's because of the gift of Jesus Christ who died on Calvary for us and who rose again three days later with all power in his hands. It's about the cross. We have a treasure. You see, there's a, there's a treasure inside of you. You ought to write that in the chat. There's a treasure inside of me. The message of salvation and its results uh, produces something that's glorious and, and divine. We are nothing but the earthen vessel. Notice what that verse says. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels. The vessel is not the treasure, but there's the treasure, there's the treasure rather of the gospel of Jesus Christ inside of us, which I call that hidden potential. Not only is the word of God inside of us, but the will of God is inside of us to help to help to promote us, to promote salvation for others, but it's, it's there to empower us with a salvific experience, and, and it gives us the power beyond which we could have ever imagined. We have a treasure in us. 
The treasure is the gospel. Notice this. The treasure is in us, the earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the excellency of the power is of God, is not of us. So it's not about me, it's not about you. It's about that which Christ has placed in you. And as a born-again born believer, you have potential that has to be unearthed, that has to be taken out, so that you can be what God has made you to be, what God created you to be in your mother's womb. That potential is there. And you ought to say that with me. The potential is there for your greatness and for you to go higher and to do more than what you are. I hope I'm talking to a group of people this evening and in the future that's not satisfied with where you are, but you want to go to a higher level. I remember that song, Up the Ladder to the Roof, so I can see heaven much better. And so as we go up, God wants to raise us up. But, but I want you to notice something. We're talking about hidden potential. The second verse that I want to show you this evening is, is this one. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. But as it is written. Now, this is an Old Testament quote. But as it is written, I hath not seen. That means that you haven't seen it all for you, for your life, what your life can be. Nor have you heard it. Neither has it entered into the heart of man, which means you, mankind. The things which God has prepared for, for them that love God. So you've got this hidden potential inside of you that God wants to develop, to bring out of you. It's there. It's there. And do you know that many Christians die without ever tapping into the greatness that, that God has for them? But you have this hidden potential inside of you that God wants to tap in to make you great, to go farther than what you could have ever thought about uh, going or being. But I want to share with you three principles. Uh, there's going to be more than three, but right now I want to just put these on the screen so that you'll be able to uh, follow along with me. The first principle Seeing beneath the surface. Principle number two, locating the gold, G-O-L-D, the gold inside of me. And number three, revealing my vision. Let's look at the first one. Seeing beneath the surface. In, um, I've shared this story many times it's in a book by Miles Monroe, the late Miles Monroe, about vision and empowerment of vision. He talks about in Bangkok, Thailand, the government wanted to, to build a highway through a village. And I took this story and, and, and goodnized it so I could use it here. They wanted to build a highway through a village, but the path that the road would take, there was a Buddhist monastery with a little chapel. And um, so they would have to relocate the monastery, including something at the monastery that was an 11-foot clay statue of Buddha they would have to relocate it to another place. 11 foot statue, clay statue of Buddha. So before they could even get anything done, they had to move this statue. 
and they bought they you know they, they brought in the heavy equipment the crane and the government workers moved that monastery in sessions and in sections rather and put it on better land and when the workers got ready to transport the statue of Buddha to the new location as they lowered it in place and started working with it to get it out of the the monastery some of the clay started to fall off all the people you know they got upset because of their belief in this image in this statue excuse me they got upset about it because of of how they believed and how they perceived this was an idol of God they got upset about it and and so this was a a symbol the people were were, were afraid they thought that uh, their lives might even be destroyed because these government workers were, were were you know messing around with that statue and they thought that their lives would be uh, messed up because of this idol God but the more they tried to uh, work with the statue, the more the clay started falling. It just started falling off. It was an old statue. And to everyone's amazement, there was a hush that fell over the crowd. All the clay fell off. And suddenly the workers, they stared in amazement. Something unexpected was revealed. Underneath this old clay was a solid gold statue. It was old, the clay was over it. Nobody knows why it was covered like that, but underneath it, underneath it, there was pure gold. But before the statue, you know, before the government came in. Uh, the people thought it was worth about fifty thousand dollars, but today that statue is worth millions and millions of dollars. It's visited each year by hundreds and thousands of people. But the story illustrates that what we can see, we are that earthen vessel that earthen vessel, that earthen vessel in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We're that earthen vessel, but beneath us, there is, uh, seeing beneath the surface, they, they couldn't see beneath the surface. They uh, had no idea that the gold was underneath that clay. And because the gold came out, the hidden potential. I believe that many of us are living as clay vessels, when in reality, we're pure gold inside, and 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 so we we've, we've got to we've got to work on this. We've got to work on this because uh, just as that gold statue statue was 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 hidden inside the clay. The gold inside of each of us is waiting to be revealed. We're the earthen vessels, but there is a gold inside of us. We've got the treasure of God inside of us. We've got the gospel of Jesus Christ inside of us. And seeing beneath the surface, let me say this to you. you got to believe in yourself. I'm not talking about being vain or being void. I'm not talking about the kind of attitude that you think the party doesn't start until you get there. Or you think that the job can't go on without you. Got bad news for you. Here's a news flash. When you die, the party will still go on. You just won't be there. And so you've got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe in you. Your self-esteem means so much to you. There's gold inside of you. Using this as a metaphor, there's, there's gold inside of you, inside of this clay, inside of this earthen vessel. There, there is gold inside of you. 
my friends, and God wants to bring out the best in you. You ought to put in that chat, God wants to get the best out of me. God wants to get the best out of me. That's what you ought to put in that chat section. God wants to get the best out of me. Locating uh, in point two, principle two, principle one, seeing beneath the surface, but principle two, locating the gold inside of me. Well, the statue has been revealed, so we know that uh, with this statue, it's been revealed, and you know there's gold underneath, but the question comes up, how do I locate the gold inside of me? How do I locate the gold inside of me? Let me tell you what that gold is. And you ought to put point um, principle two in there, locating the gold inside of me. You ought to put that in chat. What is the gold, G-O-L-D? We're not talking about goals now. We're talking about this gold that's beneath that clay veneer of your life. The gold, uh, those are your dreams. The dreams you've had or once had. So many people go through high school and uh, certain titles are given to people, you know, the one most likely to succeed and whatever. That doesn't mean anything unless you can get in touch with the gold inside of you. You got to locate it. That gold is there. It's there because Christ has placed it there for you so that you can grow, so that you can be greater than what you are as a member of the body of Christ. But you've got to locate the gold inside of you. These are the dreams that you've had or once had. And uh, the dreams that have not come to reality are the dreams that will come to reality, but they haven't as of yet. That gold, the gifts, the talents that have not yet been developed, you have hidden potential. And God wants to get the best out of you. Would you write this in the chat? And I'll go slow. God wants to get the best out of me. Period. God wants to get the best out of me. This is a lesson for, for me to encourage you, to push you, because you can be greater than what you are. It's not too late. You're still breathing. If you're listening now, you still have uh, breath. You still have energy. It's not too late. God wants to get the best out of me. So I'm teaching myself, and I've taught this lesson before, but God, but before I preached this lesson, but I thought it best to go back and pull up some of those sermons where I didn't have the time to really uh, doing the message to lay this out. But God wants to get the best out of you. The purpose for our lives is not even yet fulfilled. God has a plan for you and no matter who you are, what country you live in, you have a personal purpose. For every human being born, you have a personal purpose. It's not an accident that you're here. You were born at the right time. God created each of us with a unique vision. And God has tremendous plans for you. I want you to listen close now. God has tremendous plans for you 
that nobody else, are you, are you following me? That nobody else can do. There's something exceptional about you that no one else can do what God has put you here to do. God has created you with the unique vision. You ought to just say that with me. Whether you write it in the chat or not, you ought to just repeat this after me. God has created me with a unique vision. Come on. God has created me with a unique vision. Now, you've got to believe that. You've got to believe that. Stop letting people tell you what you can't do, who you can't be. Stop letting others who won't even jump over a mud puddle for you ask you to go over oceans for them. Stop doing that. Stop listening to the naysayers and to the haters. God has a unique vision for you. You ought to say it one more time. God has a unique vision for me. You know what else? God has tremendous plans for you that no one else can accomplish. I'll say that again. God has uh, unique plans for you that nobody else can accomplish. But you know the tragic thing is that many people live their lives without ever recognizing the visions or the vision that they have inside of them, the dream, the goals, G-O-A-L-S, the aspirations. But remember, all of this is hidden potential, and all of this is the G-O-L-D inside of you. So, a couple of questions as I, um, as I finish up the lesson for tonight. A couple of questions. How do you remove the clay and uncover the gold with inside you? Now, that's a good question. How do you remove the clay and uncover the gold that's within you? Your dreams, talents, and desires can be refined into a process of discovering and fulfilling your life's visions so that the purse, the gold of unique and personal gifts can shine. Let me say this to you. How do I discover it? Number one, you've got to stay in the word, but number two, you've got to believe it. You've got to believe that God made you greater than what you are and that God wants great things for you and to bring the greatness out of you. It, it, it's kind of like squeezing a sponge. You want to get all of the water out of the sponge. And if the sponge is full of water and just sitting there, you can't tell how much is in it until you start squeezing it to get it out. You're just like that. Sometimes God has to squeeze you to get the best out of you. Sometimes situations are occurring. It's not that uh, you're being troubled. Uh, it's not that uh, your foundation is about to come apart. It's the fact that God sometimes has to shake up or allow things around you to be shaken up to move you. If that statue that we talked about in Bangkok had never been moved, the greatness underneath that veneer of clay would have never been discovered. If you, my brother, my sister, listening to me now, if you, if you had never been challenged, you would not be where you are right now, but you were challenged. And because you were challenged, all of that changed. Are you following me? So, every one of you is a leader in 
in your own right. Questions I want to ask you. What is your vision? What is your dream? I'm not talking about uh, dreaming of being a millionaire or whatever, but what's your dream for your life, for your career? What is it that you're supposed to be doing, but somebody else convinced you that you should not be doing it? What, 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 what is it? What's your heart's desire? What, what have you always wanted to do? Uh, uh, who have you always wanted to be? When can you begin to see your vision clearly? And when will this purpose come alive in your life? When, when, when? What is it that you've got to do for this vision to be alive? What is it going to take to wake you up? To know that all the tools are there. If you have a toolbox full of tools, at least learn how to use them. What good are the tools if you never use them? Stop allowing people to determine your destiny. Your destiny is only determined by you. So what are you saying to me? I'm saying that you can be greater than what you are. You can be greater than who you are. The potential for greatness is there. And so, how are you going to locate that gold inside of you? We'll start next week with revealing my vision. God bless you. I'm glad that you joined me this evening. God keep you as my prayer. Join me Sunday, 10 a.m., right here on YouTube and Facebook. Blessings to you. Perhaps you're not saved, and you have been led by the Holy Spirit. None can come to the Father except they be drawn. And none of us can come except through Jesus. Pray this little prayer with me. Repeat after me. Jesus, I need you to come into my life. There's a drawing on me right now. And I need to be saved. Jesus, save me right now. Forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me and make me whole through your blood. Jesus, I believe you died and arose again three days later with all power in your hand. Jesus, save me. I need a Savior. I'm going to believe that you saved me. And I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. Get into a Bible-believing and teaching church where you can grow through this salvific journey. And for those of you who are on the battlefield and something happened to get you uh, discombobulated, uh, disjointed or dislocated from Christ, now is your time to come back. Come to Jesus. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. Remember, it is no secret what God can do. Be blessed. As we close out tonight, just a word about giving. As you are aware, sowing seed 
into any ministry. I call it a two-way blessing. It blesses you, the sower, and it blesses that ministry, the receiver. You're putting seed in the ground so that your crop will come up and be multiplied. What are you asking me? I'm asking you to consider letting the Holy Spirit guide you and give an offering tonight. Well, how can I do this? You can do it by mailing your check or money order. Please do not send cash through the mail to New Life Church Ministries, Post Office Box 12117, Daytona Beach, Florida 32120, or online at our website www.newlifedaytona.org. Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Something good is going to happen to you today because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Grace, peace, and mercy be with you all, henceforth, now, and for everlasting. Amen. Peace.